AI is that. So AI is this. Most people think AI is this, but what engineers thinks the AI is this, right? So so this is the public uh, thought thought or mind uh, th- or like uh, perspective on what AI is. But this is what engineers thinks, right? If they, if they know the libraries like TensorFlow, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, or NumPy or Pandas, they think they can do AI. But even that is not what AI is. So as an uh, uh, AI developer, I strongly believe this is what AI actually what it is, right? It's pure and pure out and out, a lot of maths involved. Uh, it's not that you have to know a lot of formulas and you have just have to uh, implement the formula and you have to build a system. So uh, basically, we are trying to model things, model real-time scenarios, model a human brain, model a human intelligence, or else a human vision, or else human uh, voice or natural language. So here, our objective is to model a thing, model a natural thing. So when it's come to modeling, then math- mathematics is the tool to go, right? But just because a lot of things are abstracted, we are not aware of the actual maths which we are using in our daily application, even your mobile application. Even this Zoom call is running behind a mathematical formula. It's not that it's just a software. It's just a mathematical rule which is implemented with programming language and knowledge. So max is must uh, in deep learning and machine learning, right? So don't worry about math. I will see. I'll, I'll tell how to learn max as intuitively as well, right? So this is the general definition. Okay, now coming to what is AI, it's a general definition. It's a broad area of computer science that makes machines seem like human intelligence. So basically, we are trying to replicate an human in- intelligence, right? Okay, so now comes to the questions. Uh, when did it start, right? So uh, like for some technology, it has to be a start, right? Let's say operating system or say Java or whatever the tool, th- there should be some start, right? So AI as a career, AI as an academic profession, it actually started in 1956. So the term AI is coined by uh, John McCarthy. So he, he is the creator of Lisp programming language and he is also one of the pioneer of so he along with his uh, colleagues they organized a conference in Dharmat and, and that is when AI as a career, AI as a research, AI as an academic profession is actually kicked off but uh, 1950s right? so even before that uh, they, there was a guy called Alan Turing so uh, he is also known as the father of uh, automation so he built a system to break the Enigma code so he designed an intelligent mission just with vacuum tubes and mechanical moving parts back then so it was really helpful in um, breaking the German secret codes uh, in the World War II. So you can just learn more about Alan Turing and you can watch the movie Imitation Game as well, right? So, and, and he devised a test called Turing test. So it is also used to evaluate and latest NLP model. Uh, so Turing test is run whether to check uh, whether it is it is passed that Turing complaint or not. But that is not when it actually started. But even before that, 1770, so they, 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 they were, there was a rumor called, uh, they, there was a first chess playing robot was there. So it is not actually an automated robot because there was no electricity and there was no computer in that time. But there is a table and a guy was sitting inside and he was playing, playing chess from inside. But people thought like it, it is an automated chess playing robot. Because uh, why I'm telling this? Because uh, like even 300 or 250 years ago, people had the thought of intelligent machines. It's not that something new yesterday we thought and we were doing in for past five years or 10 years. Even before 200 years ago, 300 years ago, people want an intelligent machine, some form of uh, human intelligence to be executed by to be exhibited by a machine right so that is what history of ai is but when it comes to current state okay let's come to current state so what is the current state of ai so everyone knows this guy he you would have taken his course online andrew ing so he, he is a stanford professor and he's creator of coursera and now he's currently working at baidu so uh, if you are going to learn machine learning the first and foremost course that you will be taking is his course and he just told this ai is the new electricity Right. So you just told AI is the new electricity. But why he is comparing AI with electricity? Right. So we will see the next slide. Right. So yeah. So as as an as an engineer as an tech tech savvy, like I, I strongly believe that uh, technology highly influences how we live. Right. So the way we live, uh, the way the way what, what we the, our our social life is highly impacted by the technology. Like back then there was uh, in the first revolution of steam power uh, in 1784. Uh, before that, people were doing everything manually. So if you want to travel, you you do by uh, 
way like you you do by feet you walk and every heavy lifting you do through your bare hands so people were doing all of the stuffs and for traveling it will take more time then steam power came in there were steam engines there were steam boats there were steam machines uh, it reduced some of the human burdens and we are it, it extended the uh, capability of humans we can do a heavy lifting uh, there are like steam boats we can travel to longer places and we can do trading and stuffs so that is what first revolution is and the second revolution is electricity so the electricity came in uh, tesla was there uh, edison was there ac dc and electric bulbs were invented and uh, be, before electricity came in people only used to work in the nights right so people used to work because when there was light in the daytime they used to work and the night they used to sleep but after electricity came in there were electric bulbs so people started working in three shifts for 24 hours so it again changed the cycle of how humans live right so it, like previously we were not working in the night but now people started working even in the night so that is electricity revolution a lot of automation came in industry came in every sector has some kind of uh, electrically automated or electrical electrical uh, which which runs through the power of electricity and the next in 1970 the it revolution came in so operating systems were there uh, internet was there uh, new uh, microsoft google uh, intel ibm everything were booming up and even it changed how we, how we live the life like now we have become the victim of uh, internet and social media without a smartphone we cannot even run not even a day not even an hour we can be without a mobile so only when we are sleeping we don't use mobile other time it's it's kind of an left hand for us right so we are highly influenced by uh, by uh, it uh, like we can sit in our, in our house and we can do a lot of works so th- it it changed the way we live and the next generation and the next wave is ai ai i mean quantum computing so it is going to uh, revolutionize or it's going to um, influence every domain not like education government uh, science uh, science exploration space science and new new drug discovery and maybe software government uh, agriculture so every sec- every sector is being is going to be have some influence of ai so that's the next generation right so yeah so now let's come to what is ai so when it comes to ai our only blueprint blueprint is humans right so basically so when you want to build a car or when you want to build a system what you do you 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 search for some reference right you need a reference to replicate a system right so for basically an artificial intelligence so basically you are creating to replicate an human intelligence so the blueprint is human human's brain right okay so the first thing you want to decode human brain and you should know how human brain works right okay so the human brain what it is made up of it is made up of just neurons and synapses the connection between those neurons so just for an information there are about 100 billion neurons in your human brain and there are about 1000 trillion connections between those neurons so all those things what you do your attitude your memory your learning your uh, artistic capability your mathematical capability your learning your sport your action motor function everything is embedded between those neurons and those connections so those connections is what make up you so you as a person it's what those connections are there in your brain so it's purely uh, a combination of uh, you purely the structure is neurons and there are connection between them so whenever you do something whenever you talk whenever you walk or whenever you do or think something so those synapses will get firing so if firing the sense it 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 gets activated and gets triggered so it's purely electrical activity so even you can place a multimeter you, you cannot place a multimeter but you can place an uh, emg machine on your brain and you you, you can actually uh, like uh, listen to these signal these are all nano nano amps of electrical signals which is happening in your brain it's actually electricity you can read it right it has some voltage and ampere and it and the building block is neurons so it has neurons dendrites and it has all sort of connections so this is how the hardware of uh, so this is how the hardware of the brain it is right it's neurons and connections so now the latest technique called deep learning it's highly inspired from the human brain anatomy so let just as uh, neurons synapses and uh, triggering so in the deep learning we have nodes activations and connections called weights right it's kind of a similar analogy so in the deep learning you will see detail in the later slide right so basically this is the building block so this is basically an hardware right so when it comes to software so what is human intelligence what human intelligence actually is right okay so uh, what are the signs of human intelligence okay so the human intelligence what we can do we can we can do planning learning reasoning we can do problem solving 
knowledge representation and we have uh, perception motion and manipulation and even social intelligence and creativity right so but uh, before that people thought only ai can do the top 5 or 6 things so ai can do learning ai can do planning ai can do some problem solving and knowledge representation but people never thought that ai could do and social intelligence or ai can create something but the latest ai models or 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 highly creative they can create new art they can generate faces they even they can compose music they can create a language of their own so they have become so creative and they can come they are like far better than human creativity right so, so there is there are some techniques called gans auto encoders and other uh, techniques where it, it brings the creative capability to an ai system right okay so these are the few things of human intelligence let's keep it simple right okay so uh, to compare both so on the top we have humans on the bottom we have machines so humans have memory so we can learn things and unlearn things okay we can remember things and there is perception we can see and perceive things through our eyes and there is anticipation we can anticipate or we can foresee things before it is happening and there is problem solving and decision making so given any situation or scenario so we can uh, we can adapt to the situation and we can do a whole lot of problem solving right so those are a few things what humans can do on the other side there are machines so machines now they are good at natural language you can just talk to an chatbot called uh, talk talk to your personal assistant like siri or google or alexa so or sometimes bixby and and you can uh, and, and it can understand your language right and next you have computer vision now the computer vision are far more accurate than uh, human uh, vision there are a lot of computer vision is available and dialogue and conversation there are like chatbots available in banking sector in healthcare sector just you can ask your questions with an uh, computer and get on on your question questions get answered and we have domain data and as a humans we have only limited dimension so we can understand things in only two dimension or three dimension but uh, an ai system or a computer system has access to n dimension or and it has access to every domain so it's kind of a domain data and machine learning so machine learning as simple as that it's nothing but learning from data you don't have to write rules so basically what you do you write rules right you write if condition uh, if it is if the fruit is red then it's apple if the fruit is Uh, yellow then it is banana but but if the if the if the fruit is pipe shaped then it is banana if it is a round shape then it is apple so you will be writing a lot of rules but you cannot write rules for every use cases right so th- that's the prime uh, thing here so that just t- t- keep your mind around it so basically deriving the rules from data so that is what machine learning is as simple okay fine so moving on next we have like types of ai so we will not get into in detail so from the broader perspective there are like three types of ai one is narrow ai and there is general ai and there is super ai so narrow ai is dedicated to uh, perform accurately in one particular task one particular task in the sense and and face detection model cannot do object detection an object detection model cannot translate a language a translating language model cannot uh, do uh, some kind of other things cannot do prediction right so for every dedicated task Uh, we have a separate model so one model can perform on one thing alone a cat a chatbot cannot do nlp and nlp cannot do computer vision right so that is narrow ai which is being trained on trained for one particular task on that particular data alone so that is what narrow ai that is what we have been using right now and next is general ai general ai is like uh, taking knowledge from one domain and transferring it to another domain so what it, what it means is so basically humans what we do is so uh, let let's say you are good at playing uh, shuttlecock right so then you can easily adapt to ball badminton or tennis so it's kind of similar sport so the same swings and and the same actions and the same motions with their like so you, we don't have to learn everything from scratch you can just transfer the knowledge with minimal amount and you can easily adapt to a new game let's you are riding a bicycle it's easy to easy for us to ride a motorcycle and easy to pick up a car right so that is what transfer learning works so similarly uh, a machine uh, there are, there there are domain like transfer learning so so recently they are like trending so there are like a lot of transfer learning techniques available where you can uh, take a model which is uh, which is trained on another data and you can reuse it for a entirely different task right okay so that is what general ai is and and one 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 uh, uh, domain is transfer learning and third is super ai super ai is where uh, machines become smarter than humans and it outperform human intelligence and and zombie a terminator kind of scenario occurs right so that is never possible so we will see why it is never possible i strongly believe it's never possible and and uh, and your thought is on your own right okay so when it comes to narrow ai example we have uh, personal assistants like siri alexa and cortana stuffs and we have self driving cars 
and we have recommendation systems and we have uh, cancer detections so these are all some examples for narrow ai so cancer detection uh, model can only perform that you cannot do general but a doctor in a general he can drive a car and he can diagnose people he can do whole lot of other diagnosis as well right but these are all the models uh, uh, particular uh, or dedicated to or perform only one particular task and next transfer learning see and uh, next is general intelligence general intelligence is, is some kind of uh, uh, the scenario which we see in uh, uh, real movies so uh, if you have watched most of you would have watched uh, what it is uh, terminator but uh, if if you are like uh, if you are like wanted to watch some web series during this quarantine time i highly recommend west world so west world is series uh, it's what uh, it's a case when uh, human when the robots become self aware so there they have they would have experimented with a lot of uh, self awareness in an ai machine right so the but general intelligence is nowhere near so there is an kind of projection narrow ai is current and general intelligence we might attain maybe in 20 or 30 years maybe in 2040 and super intelligence in 2060 they are predicting but i don't know when it is possible or not right and again there is another job perspective so when it comes to narrow ai the jobs are enhanced jobs are enhanced in the sense uh, it's like there are like email filters there are like uh, x ray diagnosis like lot of tools which is being support support for human workforce so we can do a whole lot of task much easier so that is the parent, present case jobs enhanced but maybe in 2040 when agi comes in general intelligence comes in so there will be jobs at risk because ai can adapt to itself and can do a lot of things on its own right so next comes super intelligence when when super intelligence comes in so then humanity is at risk right okay so narrow intelligence jobs enhanced general intelligence jobs at risk and super intelligence humanity at risk okay so what ai can do so for what ai can do i have a beautiful video i'll just drop it in the chat box later you can go and watch those video right okay meanwhile i will just give out few examples so rather than normal prediction weather prediction maybe what, whether it's going to rain tomorrow or not that is weather prediction is there uh, whether uh, diagnosing uh, retinopathy like card uh, like uh, uh, eyes eyes retinopathy or else uh, uh predicting the amount of rain or is predicting the stock price more than that ai can do much more things right so ai can play go ai can play a game and ai can learn to paint ai can synthesize or clone your own voice there are like deep fakes also available where it can clone your entire face and uh, you can morph things with very easily ai can write stories ai can write captions for movies ai can learn motor skills so open ai is the company working on this motor skills and stuff so ai, AI their simulation model uh, from scratch it is able to walk like an uh, uh, an newborn baby and ai can learn to walk and ai can drive car so these are all the few amazing achievements which we have attained in past 5 years but uh, I, there are a lot more example i just drop a link later then you can go through this video right okay so how they are implemented so now we have seen a little bit of history and a little bit of what is narrow ai stuff and all now we have seen few examples as well like as we seen like face face authentication uh, facial recognition post estimation there are a lot of things available right so prediction whether it's going to rain or not s or no whatever it is but how they are implemented so everything is implemented using these algorithms so machine learning in general and there on the on the top side we have classical learning so all all these things belongs to classical learning right so in classical learning we have supervised and unsupervised we will see what are those in supervised we have classification and regression and we have all sort of linear regression polynomial regression in classification we have svm decision trees and naive bayes and in clustering we have k means and uh, uh, like other uh, db scan kind of algorithms in pattern test we have a priori and in dimensional reduction we have pca experience test so these are all classical classical machine learning algorithms right so we will see everything in details don't worry if you are like completely unaware of, of these algorithms we will see everything right okay on the other side we have uh, neural network and deep learning so on the top side belong to machine learning on the bottom Say deep, belong to deep learning. So deep learning is again a subset of deep learning, uh, machine learning. So machine learning is a subset of AI, and deep learning is a subset of machine learning, which comes inside to inside. Okay. So in deep learning, as I said, it's highly inspired from human brains. Okay. So we have uh, perceptrons, nodes, neurons, and we have feedforward neural networks. We have convolution neural network for image processing, and we have recurrent neural network for uh, language modeling and time series prediction, and we have generative adversarial network GANs for uh, uh creating uh, new images and and coming up with new techniques like create like painting or creating new images kind of things so uh, for an information today by 5 to 7 we have an uh, introduction to gans 
session from tensorflow user group so the links are available in our social media if you want to join you can join those as well okay so these are all purely deep learning based technique which is neural network based techniques on the another side we have reinforcement learning so reinforcement learning is entirely learning from an environment so where you have an environment you have an car you have an agent so just like a newborn baby in this world it's learning to walk learning to speak learning to eat everything is done on your own right similarly in reinforcement learning an agent is put into an environment it does all sort of actions and it will get rewarded by that so we will see what are all those things okay on the another side we have ensemble methods so ensemble method is very simple uh, it's from the name itself we can understand it's ensemble so what you do is you combine multiple models you take multiple models and you 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 aggregate the results of every models so that it will be much more accurate so that is what ensemble model is okay so now we have seen these algorithms but ai is buzzword for quite a few times like recently like 3 years maybe 5 years before that there there is uh, very few people know about deep learning and stuff now everyone uh, start to talk about ai and deep learning even the normal public started about talking what is ai and stuff but when these algorithms are actually discovered so i was just uh, went curious and just went online to see when these algorithms are discovered you can see the base theorem even it is used in most of the places it is actually uh, discovered in 1760 which is just like 300 years before three, like 250 maybe 260 years before it's not something new right and we have least square optimization it's 1805 base theorem again 1812 markovian and chains uh, 1913 uh, turing machine in 1950 the first neural network in 1951 so back then there is no proper computer itself but they built a neural network right and there's nearest neighbor in 1967 and uh, recurrent neural network in 1982 back propagation in 1986 and uh, support vector machine 1905 lstm even lstm i thought like it's discovered recently but even it is discovered 20 years back 1997 and uh, we have image net computation 2009 and uh, everything is already there just if you see this video you can see uh, is jeffrey inton is one of the pioneer uh, creator of neural network the modern neural network so he himself Uh, along along with Yan Li Kun, so Yan Li Kun is the heading the Facebook research. He is the creator of CNN. If you see both, they have actually developed a fully working self-driving car, and they have drove around um, like US, so like for more than 200 miles, and they successfully implemented. And you can see Yan Li Kun is doing uh, uh, like character recognition back in 1998 and 1995, even like 25 years before, without the modern computers and algorithms. So it is not that new. It has been already there. So if you see. Uh, there is an entire uh, uh, pipeline of uh, machine learning data science uh, timeline so you can see when it started and when it is now right okay. i will share all those things maybe in the later slide i will just after the session i will uh, give you a few links if you go to these links you will get all those resources okay so why ai now so we have seen what are all the techniques available we have seen what are the algorithms available but why ai now so what is the reason for us to do ai now and why it is buzzword now is things there are three reasons the first and foremost reason is uh the data right so for for a machine learning model to perform you need data so just like that a newborn baby so let's say there was a newborn baby it just that's born so you keep it inside the house for 3 years or 5 years when it comes out it is not aware of the entire world or what is happening outside right the, the baby sees the parents the baby hears what they are talking slowly and slowly it picks up picks up the language and it watches other how they are walking and it walks and slowly after multiple iteration maybe in 6 months maybe in 1 year maybe in 1 and a half years the baby learns to walk and it learns to talk and stuff it's purely data we learn from data so just like that if you want to build a system or build an ai system you need enormous amount of data so now in 2020 only like after even after all this it revolution uh, which started 50 years ago uh, just now we have uh, starting to adapt to uh, software things like every uh, learning management system so lms was not let's say you are building a system for your uh, uh, college you are building to you are going to predict some results of your students and you are going to improve at the the results so what you need first first you need data right you need an entire history of Uh, students data their academic performance their attendance data all lot of stuff but even just 5 years ago we started to adapt learning management system and all back then it's all the attendance all the marks everything is done manually in papers and in ledgers so those are all just uh, just uh, physical data you need a digital data to to do learning so even let's say you are building a system for government okay so you wanted to optimize the ration distribution what you need you need a software of every data who are all have the ration card in which places there is most pur- purchase of rice or some dal or some sugar so you should have all those digital data to uh, come up with a model so now it is possible because every 
time every second as we speak uh, like uh, every time as we speak like billions and billions of data points and terabytes and petabytes of data are being stored we have social media we have internet and we have a whole lot of things every minute every second as we speak tbs of data are generated stored generated and stored and and 99% of the data is unused so they are they are not untouched they are just stored and not pro- process so if you process the entire data you can come up with a better world because we have access to a lot of data and when it comes to data we have a lot more problems like volume variety and velocity and stuff so that is uh, the topic for another day okay and as i said uh, 80 to 90 percent of the data are unstructured right so we just uh, we have to take care of that alone so but why ai now that's the prime topic so why ai now the first thing is data so we have access to enormous amount of data right now right okay and data is the king right so previously uh, like i just wanted to uh, uh, give an information so in last in 3 4 months ago uh, everyone know reliance ambani right what reliance did is they actually sold a oil bank they sold three oil banks to an arab country arab uh, company and they bought 1 lakh crore to set up a digital uh, data infrastructure in india right so you 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 would have known geo net is there geo fiber is there geo tv is coming geo satellite is coming and geo channel even tv channel is going to come because we are highly influenced by technology let's say you are going to a new city let's say you are you are new to coimbatore right so what you do they immediately right after you drop it in gandhipuram or some some places what you do you take your mobile and you will search for a, what are the good restaurants in coimbatore what are the good hotels in coimbatore what are the best places to visit in coimbatore so the decision is not made by us the decision is made by google so if google wants you to go to uh, mardumalai if google wants you to go to some movies google can actually influence you right because it's purely the decision is made by google like you believe uh, your the google or amazon more than you believe your friends and parents so that is the current scenario so once you have a data you can actually manipulate people what to which party to out which food to you eat which uh, clothes you buy which place you go everything is highly influenced by these companies because they have your data right so data is the new king and the second thing for ai now is hardware right so now like uh, like just uh, the samsung phone is released samsung s20 so it has 16 gb of ram 1.5 terabits of uh, m uh, like uh, like uh, ddr5 storage and uh, Uh, octa core processors so it is like within a palm of uh, within a palm of our hand we have a super computer so back in it, it is like 1000 times powerful than the apollo rocket which we have sent uh, back in uh, 1970s right so now, now within a palm of our hand at very low cost maybe few mobiles or like very 10000 5000 we have like raspberry pi which can run an entire operating system so we have when a very low cost hardware which can do whole lot of computation so now recently like google tpus are available gpus are available and uh, cpus or hypercore cpus like amd intels are available so when you want to crunch and huge amount of data so basically you are dealing with data right images data like tbs and gbs of data you need a high performing hardware to crunch those data so this uh, high performing hardware is available right now and those are all like becoming very cheap right this is the second reason and there are all other things like um, uh, tiny ml there is one framework even you can run a machine learning model in an embedded system you can run your uh, neural network model in an arduino uno or else in an in st microcontroller in some sort of this tiny ml this framework is there so technology have progressed so far uh, it is like it's evolving uh, on every day so the for ai now the first reason is data and the second reason is computing power and ease of uh, access and the third and foremost thing is Uh, uh, availability of the libraries and stuff so like if if at all for not like if if, if tensorflow is not been released as open source by google we can't do machine learning or deep learning right now so it's only these software are open source and open for public use so the tool is also gross and even we can do uh, ai and machine learning without any let, let, let's consider uh, if tensorflow is a proprietary language of google if you want to use that tensorflow you want to pay to google think about that or if pytorch is owned by facebook if if they are charging for using pytorch then think about it how it will be so all all these tools and softwares are open sourced that is one reason for us to do uh, ai and machine learning sitting in our room there are a lot of uh, programs and tools are open sourced like open source without uh, uh, i just wanted to uh, share one information uh, like uh, like uh, go and search Uh, who is the uh, uh, who is the reason for this open source foundation the free software foundation is there right richard stallman so he is the guy he could have become the next steve jobs or uh, bill gates so steve jobs and bill gates they took an operating system and they 
they went to make on money but there are people like uh, linus trodwells who created linux operating system uh, richard stallman who is reason for uh, gnu software foundation free software foundation so only because of them uh, the free software and open source software is thriving right now so there are like python it's open source and matlab jupiter scikit-learn cborn all these things are like free tools right and we have deep learning tech, uh, tools on other on the other side we have tensorflow we have pytorch and we have cntk these are all few uh, deep learning libraries right and there are other tools so all these slides i will be sharing in the later slide okay and i will be sharing it to you okay <clears throat> So, uh, so the, let's summarize it. Why AI now? So, why AI now is so we have a whole lot of algorithms from 1950s and to to 2000, and in every day there's new algorithm coming up, and we have access to big data, and we have access to hardware, and we have access to software. So that's the only reason for AI uh, is booming right now. Okay, yeah, okay. So yeah, now AI is there. We have got every tools and data and hardware stuffs. Can AI solve all the problems? So the answer is no. So right now, what AI had become is AI has kind of become a buzzword. Let's say a uh, training program. People tend to take an AI curriculum. People buy products powered with AI. Let's take a mobile phone. AI powered camera. AI powered mobile phone. AI powered tool. So wherever they there is, they add the term called smart and AI with that. So the AI has kind of become a selling point for every product and stuffs. But AI cannot solve all the problems. and it's like this meme is all like a guy is trying to solve a simple linear regression problem using deep neural networks you don't need to uh, implement a deep neural network to solve a simple problem right you just need a formula just just a two step formula is enough to implement stuffs lot of things can be actually implemented with plain code and logics which is far, 100 times faster so when you go for deep neural network so it, it's it's not required in every places right okay. and will uh, and and that is there and will ai take over the world so ai super intelligence or general intelligence is no more near it will take another 10 or 20 years to come and this is um, people having no idea about ai saying ai will take over the world but ai is never going to take over the world so this is my neural network classifying cat as a dog right so ai is dumb it it has a self awareness or on its own like in humans do it is just Uh, its prediction and classification is purely based on its data so when the data is faulty and the algorithm will perform poor right but but data is there but data uh, like ai is dumb but data is vulnerable and deep learning is a back, black box like people used to say deep learning is a black box so there is a reason for that right so why data is vulnerable and why deep learning is black box so as i said as humans uh, as a victim of social media and modern internet so we are highly influenced by all those technologies let's say a yeah, yeah, facebook can influence think this one example is cambridge analytica then cambridge analytica what they done is they are, they have taken the uh, uh, the profile and details of people and they have targeted politics ads for for crumb so they, they sell tell it like this so they like uh, the cambridge analytica the cambridge scam you know the analytica scam so it it actually influenced people to vote for a particular party right so that is like huge uh, thing against the democratic uh, thing and stuff and all so and there are people like uh, uh elon musk and stephen hawking so they are like telling like uh, we need to regulate ai so before ai comes and take over all those jobs and stuff so we we need like as recently the european union comes came up with gdpr general data regulatory and protection and stuff so even ai has to be regulated because there are a lot of ethics involved because uh, ethics involved and a lot of uh, humans are involved in the process so that they are they are coming up with to with to regulate the ai just because ai is uh, very uh, the the ai not ai the data is very vulnerable so uh, i i will see why it is right then it's ai is safe okay so the, the, this is one question so i just wanted to carry a twitter tweet by brandon roger so he is comparing ai with the plutonium so everyone know what plutonium is like uranium and plutonium is a nuclear weapon right so he is comparing ai with a nuclear weapon just like how a nuclear weapon can destroy entire nation a data can destroy entire nation he is giving five comparison between plutonium and data so very difficult and expensive to store so all both the things are very difficult and expensive to store and very powerful it finds takingly refined if it refined it's very powerful and very valuable on black market let's say like uh, people used to collect your emails and mobile numbers more often right so what they do is they sell it like 1 lakh email id for 1000 rupees they or 10000 rupees they sell it online so then people keep on calling you for credit cards and some scams and other rummy whatever nonsense it is right it's very valuable on black market the human the our our data is and can destroy lives if handled mis- if accidentally mishandled it can actually destroy life. and it can destroy societies or countries if weaponized just think of it you don't need nuclear weapon to uh, throw it on a country to destroy it let's say uh, pakistan had access to india's other database so it has an entire access to india's other database 
it can entirely destroy the country because it knows where every people are what are all their details their fingerprints their retinal scans their education qualification almost everything is there right so with an access to the data you can actually destroy a country right and uh, leakage of medical data i just used to tell it okay so when you go online on amazon or flipkart you search for a product let's say for a mobile phone or a uh, laptop then immediately you come to your facebook or instagram you will get an ad right so that has been happening for past 3 years or 4 years right so it's like customer targeted ad or whatever it is right so that is good fine but just think of this case let's say today morning you are going to an hospital right maybe a stomach pain or or fever viral fever and immediately you are opening your facebook and you are getting tablet ads so how it will be right and immediately you need of a money and immediately a banking guy is like you ask your friend in whatsapp for an uh, for a 10000 rupees of lend okay and immediately an uh, bank calls you and gives okay you need 10000 i will give you loan for two months or three months so just think of that so the medical data and the financial data are highly sensitive so if it is known by some other people so they can influence you they can they can uh, miss miss they, they can uh, make you to do some bad things to do all sort of things it actually uh, threatens your life right so there are a lot of things privacy and ethics also the concern because when it comes to ai mostly we deal with uh, object recognition or object classification those are all for prototype things when you go to companies or when you go to real time scenarios the things are totally different okay so yeah so that is data is very vulnerable and deep learning is black box in the sense see uh, black box in the sense you can't understand what is happening within because if we have not completely discovered how the human brain working mechanism itself but the deep learning is on the next level and it has a whole lot of neurons and things and researchers are trying to decode how the model is working and stuff so even it's kind of a black box it's unknown what is happening inside is unknown right and will ai take our jobs so definitely it will take our jobs it will take all those redundant repetitive uh, dumb jobs but uh, we will have much more things to explore because uh, like uh, like like we have been like a lot of things like i know friends in corporates their daily job is to uh, do customer support or do or do read mails so daily they used to read mails hundreds and tons of mails so for customer support you can easily implement a chatbot right you don't have a guy sitting over there and answering the same question again and again most people ask a common questions 90% of the time they ask the same question but like in some cases only they come up with a new question so all those things can be automated right and they could do something much more further they can explore arts they can learn a new skill they can dance they can make a movie they can they can learn they can involve in sports they can spend time with family so we can do a lot more things like it will take our jobs but it will not take every jobs we will have a better jobs in the future right okay so these are a few things like health sector communication hospitality uh, like construction and finance and stuff and stuff okay and there is also one meme so uh, there is like an machine learning internship Uh, in delhi at aam aadmi party so even politicians are like well uh, aware of the booming of data science and machine learning techniques even if they wanted to optimize their election stat- strategy optimize their election campaign so they can use data because they, they can they can use data to come up with a better plan better planning for the public or better planning for their um, their party or better planning for corruption and stealing who knows what right because if you have data you can do whatever you want right so yeah this is true this is not a meme so this is actually true right okay and uh, yeah so now we have seen a little bit of history and things in general so now for the next 10 minutes i'll just give you one some technical aspect of uh, ai and machine learning stuff so please focus on that and we will move on to the learning guide so how to start with ai and what all the career path you can take and after that we will move on to iot so iot we will we will discuss on another for 10 or 15 the subsets of ai so when it comes to ai ai is a general it's a broad area so ai has been for quite a while for more than 40 years like even back in 1950s people had a thought of ai machine so we have expert systems we have rpa robotic process automation we have other statistical based anal- uh, tools and stuff and rule based systems we have a lot more systems but recent trend is machine learning and deep learning so ai as a general there's a broader category and inside that we have machine learning uh, after that we have deep learning and after that we have neural network right so ai is general technique which enables human intelligence so ai is very uh, common definition and machine learning so learning from data without programming without programming the rules it's purely learning from data and on the deep learning it's kind of an uh, mimicking an human brain it's not the replica of human brain replica is different mimicking is different it's kind of an inspired from an human brain okay so it's what what deep learning is so machine learning is mostly suitable for linear task linear task is when you deal with 
normal numbers and tabular data let's say uh, a age and uh, age and uh, height and weight is there you want to find the cholesterol level or you want to predict the obesity or not then machine learning will do fine but when it comes to images when it comes to text because uh, i'm i'm talking english even you can talk english anyone can talk english but everyone can have will have different accent different pronunciation and uh, like different uh, speed and different use of vocabulary and words so it's 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 different right it's highly non linear the same words can be can be pronounced in different format and different types so it's highly non linear and coming to images when you are, when you want to create an uh, image classification for let's say dog and cat class here there is white cat there is brown cat there is gray cat there is cat of different sizes different shapes different uh, let it comes to dog there are different breeds there is tiny uh, dog in the size of the cat there is very big dog in size of an a calf or cow so it's highly non linear but again it's a dog so we have to derive the rules so that is very highly non linear so where there is high number of non linearity you go with deep learning when things are linear you go for machine learning it's simple two lines okay fine okay so next is machine learning categories so again coming to uh, machine learning in general so we have supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning right so we will see what are all these things again within supervised learning we have classification and regression in unsupervised learning we have clustering and stuff so first see what is supervised learning so supervised learning from the name itself we can understand right supervised so we have questions and data so we have access to the questions and data so let's say i am teaching you max so i'm i'm, I'm teaching you 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 and 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 so i have given you the question i have given you the answer so you learn the operation of addition right so when i come up with a new question what is 3 plus 3 then you tell 6 right so i have given you the questions and answers which is input and output which is features and labels you can put it like this like input input output and features labels input output features labels or questions and answers okay so i give you all these things and when i come up with a new questions you 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 come up with a proper answer so that if you see this image so we have given like these are all tom which with the tom label and these are all jerry with the jerry label so we are feeding it to the algorithm and when it when it when we ask what is this then it comes it tells it is jerry or else it is tom so things are like that it's like kind of supervised learning where you have both uh, question and answer which is input and output and you train the algorithm on the input and output data and there are two types there is classification if you want to classify a or b yes or no in that case you go for classification whether it's a pen or pencil some kind of thing and when it comes to regression you are predicting an real uh, world output let's say if if tomorrow is going to rain or not it's a classification problem so what will be the temperature tomorrow at 1 pm that is a regression problem you are going to find a real valued number okay and yeah it's like classification is segregating two parts and aggregation is kind of uh, finding and real value output then comes to unsupervised learning in unsupervised learning you only have questions you don't have answers only you have inputs and you don't have outputs only you have questions you have no answers only you have features there is no labels so what you can do you can find similarity between these objects so all these things look similar gray color tall okay sharp ears then you can cluster it and in the bottom uh, brown color A round nose and tiny in, sh in shape or size then you can cluster these things so let's say for an example you are i have given these data so what you can do even though this is a pebble and this is a dal and this is a different kind of thing and it is a pencil and it is a pen so there is similarity between these things so what what how you can cluster things you can cluster like this you can cluster into class 1 and class 2 so if you see it how it is clustered so uh, like class 1 is pipe shaped thin structure and sharp at one end and class 2 is round shape broad structure and smooth surface you can cluster based upon the similarities between these things right so this is basically unsupervised learning where you have only data you can what you can do is you can cluster things and the third thing we have reinforcement learning okay so what reinforcement learning as i said it's a learning from uh, experience learning from experience it's as simple as that so you can see uh, this uh, uh, like a simulated uh, human or simulated robot is trying to jump the wall so to jump the wall it takes multiple tries So for for every try it will do a different action it will give a different force try to jump it so it will kind of give a positive reward and negative reward whenever it does right thing it will give us a right a positive reward whenever it does a wrong thing it gives a negative reward similarly kind of training your dog so when your dog is obeying your rules and it does what you are telling to do you give a food to it but when he is doing wrong thing you don't give food to food to it in that way it will know what are the good actions and what are the bad actions 
okay and yeah so like kind of positive word and negative word it's in it's also used in uh, training your dog or or landing a drone or self driving car where it has to drive through the simulated environment uh, and it learns to uh, properly navigate through the curves and roads and stuff okay that's reinforcement learning right and and there is also called um, in reinforcement uh, reinforcement learning there is one break to happen in 2017 so there is one uh, competition called like uh, there is one game called go game so right so go game is, there is a chess playing robot which beat the chess grandmaster back in 1988 uh, 1998 itself by uh, i built by ibm but go is a game which has been never thought an ai system can play that game right it's that complex there are like there are the, the, the number of moves or the number of possibility in this game i'm just telling the comparison the number of possibility in this game or the number of moves in this game it's more it, it is more than the the total number of atoms in the entire universe then just think of it this within a pin, pinch of sand we have billions of atoms just think of the entire universe atoms because it's very highly complicated game people never thought an ai system could play this game but back in 2017 may the alphago created by the deep mind uh, which is a subsidiary of google it actually beat the world's grandmaster kg 2 out of 3 and the and the special thing is uh it took a move called 37 the move 37 is kind of very famous it took a move 37th move like in chess we take moves right it took a 37th move it has been never seen in the entire history of the go game it came up with a new strategy let's say you are feeding an uh, ai algorithm with dhoni's playing style and virat kohli's playing style and sachin's playing style it will come up with a new style of uh, playing new kind of shot which is far more efficient and far more uh, accurate but when you, when you when you when you train a, a football robot with messi or ronaldo or neymar or whatever your favorite player is beckham it will come up with a new strategy right so like uh, so so then in an ai algorithm what it can do is it can find hidden strategies it can find hidden rules and patterns between the data so that is why it's a very powerful okay so now let's demystify what ai is so like a lot of people have asking what is ai and machine learning so they are like kind of confused state right so we just we will do little pattern finding okay so there is a pattern okay so input 1 the output is 1 so the input is 2 the output is 4 the input is 3 and the output is 9 and the input is 4 and the output is 16 and the input is 5 and the output is what so most of you would have already recognized the output is 25 it's just a square of that number right it's very simple it's a very simple pattern i have just not told you the formula i have just given you the sequence you are just able to predict the number of uh, the answer of question uh, the answer of the input 5 is which is 25 it's a simple quadratic equation which is f is equal to x square right so uh, like when it when i give a number called 10 so you will be predicting the number output will be 100 so very simple problem you have just fitted a line to find the thing so now let's do another pattern finding right so now now let's do a complex pattern finding whether it's able to do or not okay so let's say there is an input sequence input 0 output is 32 input 8 output is 46.4 input is 15 and output is 59 and input is 22 and output is 71 and what what will be the answer for 38 So if I give you 38, what will be the answer, right? So now, like puzzle solvers, or if you are like very good at math, you can try solving or finding the number for 38. But uh, we don't know, like we don't know, we don't have a formula, and it, this kind of pattern is kind of an hard, unrecognizable pattern. We are not able to decode it, right? So what we will do is, we will build a machine learning model to predict the number, of, to predict the output of 38. Okay, we have already have few data, right? We have already have input 0, 8, 15, and 22, and outputs 32, 46, 59, and 71. So we will feed it to the model. We will train it, and we will see what the what it is giving uh, the answer for the value 38. Okay. So let's call a simple neural network. So just forget what neural, like just don't care of what the code is there. Just just for demonstration sake. Okay. but the step you just focus on so we are just importing the library we are importing the tensorflow library and the numpy library we are importing some data x and y right so the first step is importing library the second step is importing the data the third step is building the model you will build a neural network model with one layers or multiple layers it's up to your choice and we are just giving them optimizer like mean square error so basically think of like that you have like importing the uh, library and importing the data and building the model and you are training So training, training, training. Training is like it learns for hundred more than thousand times. Maybe hundred times, maybe thousand times, maybe five hundred times, right? So it learns, learns, learns from the data. So learning happens like this. So learning is basically the tuning between the internal layers. So all the internal layers will have some values. The learning is simply tuning. Okay. So it is like, uh, and and you are teaching your kid uh, to recognize a dog. So this is a dog. This is a dog. You will point to every dog in your street and you tell him this is a dog. 
okay and you point to every cat in your street or in your village and you tell him this is cat and this is cat so that is what training means okay so after training it had predicted the number is 97 so which is close to 100 okay okay yeah but it actually predicted the number correctly which is close to 100 right so 97.7 which is 98 which is close to 100 so how it is done it right? okay we will see the internal values so uh, the internal values are you can see uh, there are like two internal variables as i said our job is to tune the internal variables right so there is there are two internal variables in our model so one is 1.8 and another is 30 30 which is about 32 right and if you see 1.8 and 30 so have you seen these two numbers anywhere like 1.8 and 32 right most of you would have done it in the programming classes right it is just lcs to fahrenheit conversion right so it is just like uh, Uh, like the given the value the number 32 32 into 1.8 plus 32 that will be the output it's just it's just a formula right it's this is celsius to fahrenheit conversion so in traditional programming development in traditional programming what we actually do is we will have a input data we apply a logic and we produce the result but it is not uh, in the machine learning case where we have input and output data we derive the rules so we have the, the algorithm doesn't know the rules if the algorithm doesn't know whether it's a temperature or celsius or fahrenheit whatever it is it has derived the rules from the data itself from the input and the output data it has found the relationship between the input and the output data right and it had come, it had come up with its own formula and it had predicted the number 1.8 and 32 very accurately right so in in traditional software uh, uh, traditional programming what you do is uh, let's say you want to convert celsius to fahrenheit you you write a function like define function write a function you pass in the input like in celsius and you get the output as fahrenheit right so here uh, the things are like that you have uh, input you have algorithm and you you get the output right but in the machine learning you just have the input data and the output data but you don't have the algorithm you don't have the rules or you don't have the algorithm to uh, to, to take the to to predict the output. so what you do we just put in a random number of uh, tunable variables inside and you train your model using data so once you train in it will come it will it will find the relationship between the input and the output right so basically you feed in the data you feed in the input you feed in the output it will derive the rule right so in traditional programming what happens so this is one important slide in traditional programming you give the rules and data it gives the answer but in machine learning you give the answers and data it gives the rules it's as simple it's same for every technique every model for every use cases right okay and uh, yeah and there are like forward prop backward prop lot of things available so the main part is data collection and algorithm is already there we just have to tune so you have to tune 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 thing so these are all the most used algorithm so if you just wanted to uh, become a good uh, decent machine learning engineer you just wanted to know supervised thing and unsupervised thing in supervised you have regression and, and classification and, um, and clustering and dimensional reduction you need to know linear regression logistic regression decision tree and ibs stm k means and k these are all the few algorithm which you are supposed to know you should know like 80 to 90 percentage of the task and problems can be solved using these algorithms right uh, and and where to use the right algorithms so if you want to find whether it is a or b then you go for classification algorithm whether it is weird then you go for anomaly detection right uh, when it, when when you want to predict how much or how many then it's a regression algorithm so we want to find how it is organized then you go for clustering algorithm so then uh, if you have a question like what to do next what step i have to take next then you go for reinforcement learning so these are all the categories like for every problem you can come up with a different uh, bunches of algorithms and techniques right okay Yeah. So these are all few recent trends: machine learning, deep learning, fin fintech, IoT, big data, robotics, data science, insure tech, analytics. So every these things have some kind of AI within it, right? Machine learning, deep learning is AI. Financial tech is again AI. And IoT, you you generate lot of lot of data. You need AI model to predict something from the data. So so just collecting the data alone will not will will not be uh, make sense, right? You have to analyze from the data. And robotics and data science everywhere AI is involved. So how do I start? so this link ai all resources this is compiled by myself and my team from school of ai it has all the resources starting from programming to mathematics to machine learning and deep learning everything is very easy and they will teach you like uh, teaching to a 5 year old kid it's very simplified these are the best resources online so mostly people go online search for best tutorial then you go to edureka and you go to simple learn they will charge lakhs and lakhs of money or you go to coursera and you apply financial aid and coursera Uh, it's fine but it's very high level you can't understand a lot of things right so if you go to this blog and you if you want to learn something let's like say linear regression or decision tree if you take a resource from this particular web page 
it will be as simple as that it is very simple and clearly explained so please make a few use of this link i will just drop drop this link in the chat box later on okay and and these are all the resources compiled by these people okay and shall i start tomorrow okay now i have given you the resources now i have just give you a glimpse of what ai is and what ai can do and now i have given you the learning guide learning resources as well but shall i start tomorrow the answer is no because now i have i am seeing a lot of people right from their first year even before joining the college they wanted to finish a course on coursera and edx uh, it's okay fine it's good to know all those latest techniques and techniques and tools but as we have seen i have switched career many time right from electronics engineer to network engineer ccna to web developer to app developer to iot engineer to cloud engineer to ai and ml engineer now i am pursuing a career in self driving cars and autonomous drones so the only thing i am able to do it is i have a very strong programming foundation back i was in colleges we were not learning all those advanced ab abstract techniques we were actually working on solving programs and learning data structure and algorithms uh, very precisely and very strong so because of that fundamental strong knowledge we are able to adapt to any technology if you learn tensorflow today in 3 years or 5 years a new framework will be out it will be totally obsolete right so now we are doing machine learning like machine learning is not there back 5 uh, years back or 10 years back after 5 years back things like blockchain things like quantum computing quantum ai and lot more things will come in right in that case all these things will become basics these things will be obsolete no, no one will be using these things so don't run behind a framework or don't run behind algorithm stuff first you have to do a solid first you have to learn you have to very good at programming language so learn oops learn uh, programming paradigms and stuff then comes to data structure learn linked list uh, arrays list sets hash tables graph data structure and trees and whatever it is and goes to algorithm search algorithm a greedy algorithm binary search tree or whatever it is algorithm you uh, do all sort of stuff then come to ai and ml because uh, 50 to 60% percentage of the thing in ai and ml is actually basic computer science and programming stuff so i have i know people who come to ai ml workshop and they doesn't even know to write a for loop or iterate to an array right so you don't know to write a for loop you don't know recursion you don't know create don't know to create an object then you come to ai workshop and do machine learning and linear regression there is no sense in that you can get results and what you are going to do with that right so i highly recommend you to do all sort of Uh, basic computer science and algorithms before getting into ai and ml right and again mathematics mathematics is like very important topic and we have very few time left i thought just 3 to 5 minutes i will just uh, uh, discuss on max and we will move on to iot right okay so max is there max is already been for a while max is very important because when you are doing object classification or image recognition its computer knows only numbers so basically our objective is to derive an insight from just numbers when there are numbers when there are matrix our option is max right so only max like lot of uh, things are abstracted but is actually max is running behind right okay if you want to predict this number as 8 so this number will be in the form of this array right very very simple in the form of this array so using this array you have to predict the number right so you can see this matrix multiplication is what neural network is the entire neural network it might be a recurrent neural network it might be gans it might be a uh, convolution neural network auto encoder whatever the advanced concept you bring it to me i will show the math in it 90% its building block is math purely matrix multiplication it's nothing very high level right so yeah so you should be have a strong foundation in linear algebra right you should know what determinant is you don't have to know the formulas so even i don't know what a determinant formula for determinant is most of you would have known but i don't know what 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 is the formula for determinant or what what are eigen what is the formula to derive eigen values or eigen vectors or inverse or transpose but i know what it does i i know what uh, determinant actually mean right so you, you should know an intuitive understanding of mathematics so when you are doing some operation like when you are doing addition when you are doing multiplication when you are doing derivation when you are doing calculus you should know what this math technique is doing to that data you don't need to memorize formulas and reuse it you should know that intuition so when you let's say you have a value called 1 or you have a matrix 1001 when you do some process the data changes right so you should know what changes is happening that's kind of intuitive understanding of mathematics right so once you start learning in that style you will actually like mathematics right so yeah so like like pe people uh, people used to say like uh, like i have learned a lot of math and calculus and derivation stuffs in my schools and college i have never used in this lifetime this meme uh, you would have seen in most of the places but when you start a career or pursue learning ai and ml and machine learning 
you will you will get to use all the math stuff which you have learned in your past so entire motta vidhi idil arikkiranga ma solluvanga illaya like that all the math which you have learned in your past in your college in the schools you will be using in in the a and ml domain and it will be much more interesting and stuff right so like uh, why you need strong foundation in math and why you need strong foundation in machine learning in programming so programming and math are very important right so like as far as things are working you take a code from internet you run it and it works then it's fine but when it when it, when you get an error you should know how to debug it right so why something is work, working why something is not working why one model is better than other uh, like the training time model complexity valid strategy to evaluate the model so as far as things are working fine then you are done like you are safe right when things go wrong then you need strong mathematics and programming found programming knowledge to debug those things right okay again there are like again i want to tell another thing okay uh, like most of you would have come to the conclusion okay machine learning is math then i am not going to take machine learning like i think like out of about 40 participants like 30 people are in that mindset but it is not that math is something uh, gift uh, as as we born right so we develop over the time it as like that if you want to build a muscle you go to gym and you train and you train you train if you want to become good at a language you speak you speak you speak like over the time you will get good at it similarly it comes to math is a technique as you practice daily solve problems daily you can easily pick up it's not that some people are math or some people are not math everyone can do math and again don't see in terms of formulas see in terms of pattern right so okay there's a graph okay so what is this graph represent so okay there there is some complex data let like there is some geometry so what is this geometry represent so when it comes to real life right when it comes to real life like everything is pattern and geometry and everything is data right then from the data only you have to come you have to derive formula but what we have been taught in our college and school is we take a number and we substitute in the formula and we go and plot on the graph so think in perspective of patterns and geometry not in terms of formulas and tables right again math expertise is not needed everything is taken care by frameworks like tensor and pytorch right you don't have to write math but you should have that intuitive understanding of math so the subjects are linear algebra linear algebra for for forward propagation uh, for matrix multiplication probability and statistics for basic analysis calculus for optimization algorithms and time complexity basic algorithms and big o notation or time complexity and stuff and few others so these are the basic things uh, most important topic required for machine learning okay yeah so we will skip out these few slides these are all few uh, topics which you should be known you don't have to learn every linear algebra every calculus there are only few techniques which is uh, needed i will share these slides later the session like all these topic you can find in the links i will be sharing in the end of the session okay and uh, yeah and there are a few other things as well mm, i think uh, yeah i think how to start like now let's come to a summary right now let's come to a summary so how to start with ai and machine learning so that, that's the prime topic right so first start with any language let's say python you take python python is like most used language there are other language like uh, r and uh, julia available you can do machine learning in any language of choice you can do it in javascript you can do it in java you can do it in php also you can do it in c++ but that's kind of quite hard but you can do it in python right python is very easy and um, first take a language python learn the fundamentals and learn the data section and algorithms implement all those data section algorithms with python and go online platform like spoge codechef lead code hi i highly recommend lead code and hackerang because the questions are very good and the ui and stuffs are very uh, easy for beginners and solve 100 programs solve 100 programming problems so once you solve 100 problems you will come to a state where everything will becomes very simple to you right so it's it's kind of hard for to to solve this 100 problems it will take maybe for for few people it may take 3 months for some time for some people it will take 6 months maybe taken 1 year do program daily so just think of virat kohli he is a greatest cricket player right but just think like uh, will he practice only the day before the match like for for a day or two will he be practicing no every day at least for a minute or for 5 minutes or 10 minutes he will just swing his bat or do some actions so every day practice if you want to become an good at one particular technique which is most you love it's not machine learning let take any domain or graphic designer or programming or whatever it is practice daily daily practice will what make you an expert right okay so solve problems and once you have done with python then come to python libraries there are like numpy pandas scikit-learn and matplotlib so numpy for matrix operation those linear algebra operation pandas for data manipulation and matplotlib and cbon for plotting and stuff and scikit-learn for basic machine learning so these are all the basic uh, libraries you should be know which makes our life easier you don't have to write every algorithm from scratch you can use all those these things right 
once if they are done then you can move to machine learning so machine learning these are all the top uh, 10 algorithms most used right from linear regression to stm to xg boost so you should know theory you should know math and you should know the implementation so once it is done you are job ready you can go to bangalore and you can earn 50k right after your college is over so if you learn this alone is enough even i can fetch you a job for that right so but you should have done all these things okay you should know all these algorithms once machine learning is done then you wanted to do something advanced image you want to deal with images and nat- chatbots and stuff you go for deep learning deep learning is you should know linear uh, you should know neural networks and perceptrons then convolution neural network and recurrent neural network auto encoders and gans so these are all in order so start with python start with the libraries solve some problems then come to machine learning uh, don't just implement in scikit learn this linear regression is just three lines you take any algorithm stm came in stm is very complicated algorithm everything is just three lines so don't always depend or rely on some libraries right to just know what is happening within the system right and then when it comes to deep learning first build a neural network model from scratch and and then go with libraries like tensorflow and pytorch right so this is kind of a learning guide Uh, all these things i have compiled into one blog i will give that bl- the link to the blog as well okay yeah fine and uh, so uh, if you have any do- like uh, yeah and and again tensorflow and pytorch all sort of things mm, okay fine